You're tuned into Taiwan Grooves. Now let's explore the local music scene. everybody and welcome to another episode of Taiwan Grooves. On today's episode we have Marian Carmel. Born in the Philippines and based in Singapore, this singer and songwriter has an innate ability to evoke emotions. Her songs are influenced by the story-driven songwriting styles of Lofi, Olivia Rodrigo Nikki, Lizzie McAlvin and Boy Genius and others. The first song you just heard in the introduction is called Take What I Can Get. Now I'm gonna stop right here and let her introduce herself properly and describe what kind of music she's making. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Marianne Carmel. I would like to welcome Marianne in the <laughs> studio. Hello. Hello. Could you please very briefly, shortly introduce where you come from, who you are, what you do? I am Marianne Carmel. I'm an artist and a singer-songwriter, a visual artist, um, a lot of things into one onigiri. Mm. Um, <laughs> and I'm based in Singapore, mm -hmm. but I'm Filipino. So I was born in the Philippines, raised in Singapore. All right. So how long have you been in Singapore? Oh my gosh. I have to calculate. Oh, it doesn't so, have to be precise. Just on and um, off. 22 years. Oh, yes, wow. 22 years. Okay. Yeah, insane. Most of my life. Most really. of your life. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever thought about going back to the Philippines by any chance? All the time. Um, <laughs> I actually go back pretty often. Pretty often. So okay. I go back maybe once a year, twice if I can. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's always Christmas and the New Year's. Right. And, you know, you have to be back home to, to be with your family. Yeah, of course. Of yeah. Course. And it's just different when you, when you spend time... Um, during Christmas with mm. your hometown. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, the fireworks and everything. It, the vibe is different. So good. Yeah. Now, a little geography lessons for our listeners. How far does it take you to fly from Singapore to the Philippines? Singapore to the Philippines is about four hours, question mark, three 
four hours. Yeah. All right. So like similar to Taiwan to yeah. Singapore. Yeah. Okay. And Taiwan to the Philippines is like an hour or two, yeah, two right. hours. Yeah. Even closer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Uh, before I dive into questions, let me ask one more. What are you doing in Taiwan? <gasps> what am I doing in Taiwan? Um, I'm here for the first time ever to go on tour. For the oh, you're not for the interview. Okay. Oh yeah, no, no sorry. <laughs> no, no, just for the interview. Forget the tour. I'm I'm here to be just with RTI with Philip. <laughs> thank you. And there just happens to be a tour. Yeah, that's right. Actually, I'm going home after this. Yeah, I'm going back to the Philippines. <laughs> All right. So yeah. you're doing a Southeast Asia tour. Yes. Mm. So uh, me and my friends Renee and Lulo, um, who are also Singapore-based artists, are here on tour mm -hmm. called the Lily Pad Tour. Mm -hmm. uh, we're up some countries in Southeast Asia mm. and Taiwan is the first yeah. apart from Singapore yeah. yeah and it's really really exciting because I think we have quite a number of listeners in Taiwan but we've never really met them okay so this is the first time that we're actually gonna be like are these numbers fake <laughs> like, <laughs> like there are all the be, listeners yeah, yeah there can't be like <laughs> 10,000 listeners from Taiwan there's no way just pull up a list in the performance are yeah. you here attendance Attend take <laughs> Nice, that's great. Wow. How are you feeling about tonight? I'm very excited. It's mm. tomorrow night, actually. Oh, right. Today? Yes. Oh, it's Thursday. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's Thursday as we record. And in my head, it's already Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Getting ready for the, the weekend. Right, yeah. yeah. In my head, it's always weekend. <laughs> Well, I'm really, really excited. Mm. Um, one, because I don't think I've performed to an audience that doesn't predominantly speak English before. Right. So I don't know how the music is going to translate. But I mean, like music is universal after right. all. You don't so, have to understand. Yeah, yeah, like the vibe is understood right. regardless of the language. But I f would find that really, really interesting. Plus, I think yeah. most of the people here, majority does understand English. Even oh, if yeah, they yeah, yeah. do not produce it 100% well, but they still can yeah. get it, yeah. You do write most of your lyrics in English and there's some yes. Tagalog? Yes, that's right. So um, I started writing in English mostly because I watched the Disney Channel original movie mm. Camp Rock. <laughs> 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 and I was nice. <laughs> really inspired by Demi Lovato's character. Mm. And then I was like, you know what? This is real. This is me. And I want to write music. Right. So that's how I started um, making sense of my emotions. Wh but when was this? Around? I was 11. Wow. When, when it came out. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I realized that I wanted to challenge myself and try to express myself in the other language that I speak which is Tagalog mm. and the funny thing is that I actually dream in Tagalog as well okay so when I get really sleepy and then my partner is like tries to get me to do something I would probably respond to him in Tagalog <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's really funny but I don't get to speak Tagalog much in Singapore right so I feel like I'm quite rusty in that aspect so I really wanted to make like an active effort to um, try to learn how to wield that language in the way that I do English because mm -hmm. I feel like I've been writing in English for so long that I can use it like uh, to write poetry yeah it's probably more natural by yeah. now yeah. But I don't know if I can do that in Tagalog as well. Like, I don't know the metaphors and, like, the imagery. But ironically enough, I feel most comfortable expressing myself in Tagalog. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. It's I feel like it's more of, like, a vocabulary thing. Right. Like, um, I would know how to express myself in Tagalog with the basic knowledge that mm. I know. Because it's conversational, mm. right? You don't need any flowery language like that. But when it comes to, like poetry and art and music right you would want those metaphors and similes no of and course of course i get it yeah. so i mean was tagalog the first language you ever heard or learned yes okay so yeah. the, the roots are there yeah you exactly just need to polish them a little <laughs> yeah so cool. it's my mother tongue and um when i moved to singapore that's when i learned how to speak english all right now let me ask some spicy questions nice <laughs> No, uh, you answered first the question about how did you get to music? Did you, like, when you were 11 and before, were, did you have any inclination towards music? Like, were some of your, your friends, your parents, your family, were any of them musicians? In my immediate family, no. Mm. But I was exposed to music mm -hmm. from a very young age. I mean, I feel like every Filipino kid <laughs> is exposed to music in some way or another, mostly through karaoke. All oh, right. Yeah. But for me, it, it was that, the magic sing. And then also, I had DVDs of like Disney movies. Mm -hmm. And I remember very vividly having the Mulan CD 
all scratched up because I kept on replaying it, <laughs> like watching it almost every day. But also I would pretend like once the DVD is out of the thing and it's in the case, I used to pretend to be a DJ. I would have my hand up on my ear and then the other hand like scratching it like a record. <laughs> and then I would I would rotate it with my hand mm. like like you would a vinyl. And then I would sing like Reflections by Christina Aguilera. <laughs> <laughs> because right. that's how music works, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, wow. So you were into it already before. Yeah, and then no, you for just sure. kept going and Yeah, but I am related to a really amazing and talented songwriter mm -hmm. in the Philippines, but I've never met him. <laughs> We have the same okay. last name. It's like a distant relative. <laughs> um, so his name is Venny Saturno. My last name is Marion Saturno. Okay. Yeah, but my first name, I mean, Filipinos, we have four names. Right. Um. So my, my first name is Marin Carmel. And then I'm not about to dox myself and tell you the rest of that. But <laughs> yeah, so I go by Marin Carmel, which is my first and middle name. Mm. But my last name is Saturno. Um, so yeah, we are related, but we've never met, I think because we live in like different provinces. But yeah, it's really exciting to be able to see that even though we don't really, we never really influenced each other in any way or that I never grew up with him. I grew up with his songs playing on the radio and singing that in karaoke and, you know, singing that in front of people as well. So yeah, even in Singapore, there is a karaoke shop um, that has his songs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? That's so crazy. Yeah. That's yeah. great. You know, I would be definitely like, hey, I got to hit up this person and yeah. we got to collaballate. Honestly, like I was thinking about that. It runs in blood, that. you know. So. Yeah, I was thinking mm. about that. Maybe I should hit him up when I'm there right. next week. We'll see, we'll see. So next week is? Uh, next week's the planned. Philippines. Okay. Yes. For how many days? We will be there quite a number of days, actually. We have, I think... I, th I think I saw three performances there. I think it was five. Whoa. No, no, four, four, four. Yeah. Yay. Um, the first one is the headline show mm. um, in Manila. Second one, we have an all-queer party, which is really exciting. There are going to mm. be drag queens there performing as well. And then we have an acoustic show with other um, local artists. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go all the way up to La Union, which is up north. Um, and then we're going to do an acoustic show, me and Renee. Cool. Yeah, and then probably surf if we can. Wow, <laughs> exciting yeah. summer coming up. <laughs> yeah, truly. We're making core memories here on this yeah, trip. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. So you have kind of chipped into who were your musical influences. Could you give me other names? Oh my gosh, it keeps changing. I feel like um, depending on when you ask me this, mm. I would probably give a different answer. Okay. When I first started taking music seriously, I really, really loved Emily King and Leon Le Havas, and they are okay. like R&B soul artists. I also used to listen to a lot of Hiatus Coyote, which is like fusion. Yeah. So a lot of those things. And then now I suppose my taste has evolved with time. So now I listen to a lot of indie pop. Right now, my most played artist is Chapel Roan. Do you know? Oh my god! Sorry. You <laughs> I'll need do my to homework. listen to Chapel Roan. <laughs> I am her biggest fan. I want to make like I want to make a fan account for her. If I wasn't so busy, I would I would make a Singapore Chapel Roan fan account. For her. All right, biggest fan competition yeah. right here. <laughs> yes, exactly. So yeah, Chapel Roan is an amazing queer musician. Mm. She is essentially like a drag queen. But right now, she's on, like, the top 10 billboard. Yeah. Which is, like, amazing to think mm. of. Like, we have a lesbian drag queen on billboard top 10. Mm. That's... How did we get to this timeline? And how did I get so lucky? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm. So, uh, I feel like her music is very much needed. And it gives so many queer people around the world queer joy. Mm. Yeah. I played Pride in Singapore last month. I played her song, Hot To Go. And there's like a little dance to it, like H O T T O, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then um, the whole crowd stood up, and then we're we're just yeah, yeah, yeah. dancing with me. And I was like, oh my god, this is what it feels like to be Chapel Roan. <laughs> like her it's music, moving the yeah. crowd around. Yeah. And her music has impacted so many people around the world that mm. you know it has made a home in their hearts. They feel compelled to stand up and dance. Mm -hmm. And you know, even though I'm not Chapel Roan, like these people appreciate, and we all know that this is like just a fun thing to do. Yeah, so I love her music. I love everything about her, her vision. 
After this, listen to her entire album, The Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess. Rise and, and then Fall of a Midwest Princess. Okay. Stalk her Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and everything will make sense. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You channeled her inner energy and just yeah. project it on the people. Yeah. She has no tour dates in Asia so far, so I had to bring it to uh, my country. Oh, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. You gotta be the mm-hmm. representative. Exactly. All right. When you said your music taste has evolved, do you think your music creation also evolved? since the day you started until now for sure i used to write with just me and my guitar Mm -hmm. um, because that was my first primary instrument and because of the limitations of what a guitar can do and because of the limitations of what i can do on guitar i tend to gravitate towards a certain style of like acoustic melancholy r&b jazz influences but because I started listening to other artists who had more of maybe like synth pop or like uh, electric guitars or mm. like all these other instruments that I couldn't play, I actually have a producer with me now throughout my journey. So his name is Charlie Carrada, amazing person, very, very talented. And he's responsible for a lot of my music, also my friend's music. <laughs> so it's a really, really fun collaborative environment. And even though we don't live in the same country, we still get to like call and like write songs together. Nice. Wow. Um, or maybe even separately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what would happen sometimes is I would send him a demo of a song and then he would produce on top of that. Or he would send me a fully produced beat or like a demo of a beat. And then I would write on that. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we kind of know each other's working styles at this point. But when we were both in university, we studied at the same university before he moved away, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So we did have experience writing in the same room, which I think is the reason why we work so well together. Even right. half of yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, I feel like it frees up a lot of my songwriting like the avenues of songwriting that you could do because it's not just me and my guitar anymore and I get to challenge myself depending on what music comes yeah and like what kind of genre Mm. yeah so that's why I feel like I've been able to write a lot more upbeat cheeky songs rather than the usual sad (laughs) six eight that i um, i mean the guitar is still there you know oh for sure yeah if there's a no internet connection you can always grab your guitar and write one yeah (laughs) and i could also just get better guitar (laughs) if i practice (laughs) i'm sure you are yeah over time Uh, i'll try i'll try awesome you are answering my questions i don't even have to ask them (laughs) (laughs) all right when you write music do you do you bear something in mind that you hope that you tell the audience that you convey with your music? I feel like the purpose of my art is always to just share what I feel in the most honest way possible. Yeah, because when I started writing music, it was about making sense of the emotions that I felt. But then over time, as it became something that I was actually doing professionally, I realized that people around the world can identify with the themes that I sing, no matter how personal it is. Things are just universal, right? Like Mm. emotions, breakups, whatever. I feel like in every song, I just try to be as honest as possible with how I feel so that other people can also see themselves in that music and feel seen because Mm -hmm. of it. Because, I mean, before I was making music, I would listen to music because whoever wrote that song felt exactly how I felt or in some way similar to what I felt even though I've never met them and they're on the other side of the world you know it makes you feel seen that's what I think is the beauty in art and music so yeah I feel like that's what I always hold but of course I mean having done it professionally for a couple of years there's there will be some like little voices and (laughs) things that um that would be there when you're writing like for example um oh no what if this doesn't do well on TikTok? (laughs) Or like, what if this isn't the song of the summer? (laughs) So I try to, I try not to think about that Mm. while I'm writing. So I just try to be as honest as possible. When I am writing the song, I try not to edit Mm -hmm. too much until I have written everything and then I refine it. And refine it. Okay. Wow. Very well put. I feel like a lot of musicians share the same viewpoint. Like they produce something from their own experience. Like the band I had last week, they were also, they wrote a heartbreak song. Even though it's very customized for this one person, like what happened to him, it was his experience. But then there were people writing, hey, that's exactly how I felt. Even though it was a completely different scenario. But, you know, the emotions are kind of repeats. Yeah. Yeah. And even Mm. when it's really specific, I feel like that actually builds like the world that you're writing about and people can identify even more Mm -hmm. with it. Yeah, I don't know. Like whenever a a songwriter talks about 
a very specific thing in the song, it makes me feel like, oh, wow, that makes it so much clearer in my mind. Mm. And it makes sense why you would feel this way. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, how do you get the inspiration for your lyrics and for your music writing if you do your own guitar? Yeah. I, I think it's mostly just what I go through in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Inspiration for my lyrics. Does it have to be a big event, something that really moved you? Or could it be something very small, like just watching, I don't know, autumn leaves? Yeah. Down? Oh, for sure. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the big stuff is the catalyst. Yeah of the emotions that you're feeling, of why you are compelled to go to the guitar and write something. Mm. But all the little stuff, like the autumn leaves falling, the the sun hitting you just right, it's all things that you can write into the song and weave into that to mm -hmm. make it sound more real. Right. Yeah, so lyrics inspiration, I guess like living life <laughs> is what I would say. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. It doesn't have to be always, you know, something groundbreaking and oh, I have to write about this because then it's kind of, you're, yeah. you're like, oh I have to yeah, you're pushed but it's just a rainy day you're on the bus and suddenly you're like hey yeah I think I should write about this exactly and mm -hmm. also sometimes I feel like for songwriters especially we feel pressured to write about every single big thing to like milk it out and to like <laughs> really get the most out of this emotion mm -hmm. But sometimes you also need time to process that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's important mm. to, yes, write about it if you want to, but also give yourself that grace and time to process it so that you can find the words to write it out. Yeah, mm. is what I learned. Yeah, many years and many emotions. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Nice. All right, let me ask you. So we did kind of cover the creative process and the inspiration. Now, when I would ask you about live performances, is there a specific way that you approach them? Do you have any kind of small habit, ritual, any kind of sorts? I love that question, first of all. So live performances, I used to have really bad stage fright. Really? Yeah, like I was a very nervous Nancy. And every time I went up on stage, I feel like I would play it off quite okay. Otherwise, I feel like it's people like would know. inner chaos. Yeah, inner chaos. Outside calm. Like, yeah, and then in my <laughs> mind, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> But I have been working through it with my therapist. Mm -hmm. And we did a lot of work this year. And I'm really proud of myself because in the past couple of performances, I feel like it really translated. Awesome. And I would see like videos of myself last year as compared to this year. And the difference is huge, I would say. I mean, not to toot my own horn. No, <laughs> but no, no, like, no, no. I worked really hard on that. That's great. <laughs> yeah. And so one of the things that we worked on, and this is going to sound really like woo-woo, is meditation <laughs> no it's, I, yeah i'm fully a hundred percent supporter of that so yeah i know for sure mm. it's really important to to ground yourself i feel because um before i go up on stage i used to not be able to do that and then i would just be a bundle of nerves going up on stage bringing that bundle of nerves and then essentially trying to sing with my fight or flight response yeah. all the way up it's like um, a habitual thing takes over and yeah then, for sure yeah. and then so now with like meditation i would be on the side of the stage have my microphone and then just like make sure that I feel my body fully grounded like starting from my feet all the way up to like the top of my head and it's a funny sight because sometimes as someone who is working on a festival or a show if you see someone at the side of the stage with their eyes closed <laughs> standing fully still with a microphone um, in hand like holding it in front of my chest and just deep breathing that might look insane but like for me no. I'm, I'm just in the zone you know so And that's what like really grounds me and gets me ready to go up on stage. But also before that, I love watching live videos. Like before I leave my house, I love watching live videos of other performers, like my favorite performers, Chapel Roan, of course. And yeah, just like seeing how they work the crowd and like how much fun they're having. Mm -hmm. So I have tried to, I guess, like rewire my brain into thinking less about oh my god what are people gonna think of me while i'm on stage and more of wow this is a fun thing that i get to do and it's like play you know like i get to it's deliver. a practice session and there happens to be a lot of people. yes <laughs> yes but also it's like i get to deliver the music in this way mm. and let other people experience it in this way And I'm very fortunate and very lucky to have a lot of supportive people around me, my band, um, my my partner and my friends, and also the people in the crowd. Like they I have a, a number of people in Singapore who come from my, my shows like every time. Mm -hmm. 
and That's I'm very awesome. lucky. Regulars. Yeah, yeah, regulars. I have friendship bracelets from them. <laughs> I'm not wearing all of them today, <laughs> but yeah, like I love what we have, and mm. it's it's great. The community is very strong. Awesome. Yeah. All right, I'm slightly, you know, taking notes, <laughs> tips and Meditation, tricks. Meditation, yeah. check. A lot of good people around, <laughs> check. <laughs> That's great. See, in my head, I would be like, yeah, it just gets better over time. But I guess there is a little trick that you really have to kind of look at it, step mm. back and be like, okay, I think I could do this and this would happen. You know, like it's not yeah. just that you go up there and everything just gets better over time. Like there is a little effort that you put in. Yeah, for That's sure. Great. I mean, time will definitely make you better. Right. But yeah. since you said, I mean, you've been doing this for a while. And well, if I understand, the last year has been the biggest leap. The biggest so, change. Yeah, the yeah. biggest change. Yeah. Awesome. Get a good therapist, man. Step one. <laughs> <laughs> and this concludes today's episode with a lovely chat with talented Marianne Carmel. I have one more song before I leave. So thanks for all of you tuning into Taiwan Grooves. I hope you like her music. Go check her out and support her work. This is Marianne Carmel and What If Nobody Kisses Me. Shut down.